Yo, what's going on guys? Green, green, green. We are green on the day. AMC up three and a half percent roughly. AMC up one and something, some change. Either way, a little bit green on the day. Both of them stocks for the nine millionth day in a row, basically trading the exact same like they've done 80% of the time in the last 12 months of, of watching this madness, right? Uh, real quick, shout out to Boss Blunts. If you guys have not seen the interview with Dr. Marco Marco Metzler, very good. Uh, a different kind of perspective. This guy obviously knows what he's talking about as far as market crash, predicting things, this, that, the other thing. Um, I did see the post a couple weeks ago about, do you know, this guy's a shill or how do we know it? It's just stop, man. Stop. You know, I get that we're 12 months into this and, you know, looking at the stock trading sideways every day or getting ladder attack down, it gets boring. So we get out of the realm of things and, and go look and pick things apart. And I, I don't want to start this video off negative. We talked too much negative stuff yesterday, but I don't understand how people cannot make their own decisions on who they want to talk to and just shut the fuck up. I mean, literally, seriously, I read a post. I'm not even going to get into it today that looked like it's <laughs> it looked like a, a novel you know those beautiful well laid out reddit posts or, or in all the dd the fact finding that takes hours if not hundreds of hours to put some of these things together there was one done that was basically shit talking spent how do you have that much time to concentrate on trying to slam people slam a scenario slam whatever you're going to do where does that time come from you guys I'm pretty boring, dude. I don't do much anymore, but I don't even have 15 minutes of time. I don't want to waste that time in going in and trying to pick apart or take certain things that somebody says and twist it into, oh, this guy's a shill, this guy's a fuck. Stop. It's just stupid. Okay, enough of that. This was outstanding. Shout out to Boss Blunts for having him on. Good guy. Not a lot of stock talk, market stock. Um, I've said this all along, too, that I think a market event of some sort is going to happen, and that's probably the main thing that is going to cause this squeeze and stocks that we never knew existed, squeezing to the moon and back. Um, very good. So we'll pop a link into there. That was outstanding. Uh, AMC, 2894, up 3.54% on the day. Game Stonk, 155.33, down a tiny skosh after hours. Look at these. Yes, they're the same charts, folks. Yes. Oh, man. Our poor boy over there, Mr. Gabe himself, down 41% over there at uh, on 2021. Uh, not a very good year. Most of this was obviously due to GameStop back when they got caught. And uh, Steve Cohen bailed them out, 0.72 in Citadel. Obviously, we know about that. And then all of a sudden, you know, they Citadel ripped that money back, 500 mil or whatever I think it was. But anyway, Melvin Capital is reported has been rated by Bloomberg as the worst performing hedge fund of 2021. After reporting a staggering loss of 41%, Melvin Capital was at the center of the GameStop frenzy that led the SEC probes and congressional hearings. Reddit traders had forced them to, to close their short position, starting at a loss of 55%. Citadel and, and Plotkins, old boss Steve Cohen came to the rescue, bailing them out. Gave them their ducats to stay afloat. That wasn't a kind gesture by them fine folks anyway, either. We all know that by now, right? Uh, the company had been battling battling out fires since February 2021, and their losses kept mounting, ending at 41% through November. Uh, one other thing, too. Melvin has produced a 25% return from February 1st through the end of July, making it one of the top performing hedge funds for that period. Um, I read a lot about this at the congressional hearing about Melvin. They're badass. I mean, this company it was one of the most successful. They went on a five, six, seven year stretch run of being savages. Just think about that. One of the top performing hedge funds you get caught and they got, it was basically GameStop that caught them. They, the other guys, sure, shorting the whole sector, Citadels and all that. Melvin's a little hedge fund. They tried to, I think, single handedly uh bury GameStop and they got caught. So it it one bad play, one huge manipulated shit show in AMC and GME and just think about that. A little guy like uh Melvin, you know, luckily they didn't fold. If they didn't have those ducats from uh, 
Steve Cohen and Citadel, uh, probably 99, right? So keep that in mind. Um, this was floating around today. This is from Bloomberg, but as you see on the top of, or bottom of the list, Melvin at negative 41.5 through the end of November. Top Senvest, Impala, SRS, Third Point, Citadel Wellington, Herd Capital, Pershire Square, Volan Investors, Citadel Tactical, Citadel Tactical Trading. Jesus Christ. One of the many point seventy two down there, Tiger Global, Element, so on and so forth. So, Melvin, not a very good year. I think they're probably very grateful to still be alive at this point. And <clears throat> I'm sure they'll make some of it back up, right? They kind of did, but then they got kind of got the rug pulled. Paid their loan back to Citadel and friends, right? Uh, this was crazy. Shout out to Aaron Abrams. I think this guy took the picture posted at CP over here. It looks like Aaron Abrams put the post together. But long story short, hedge fund shorted 7.528 billion shares off exchange. Dark pool CBO EDGX from January to now. An average of 64.47 was traded in off exchange. The float of AMC approximately 513 million. Um, sound familiar? We're not, I'm not pulling up the dark pool anymore. We already know what it is. Remember, I used to report on that. We did it for three months straight. 62, 64, 66. Sounds about right. 64.47% uh, was traded in off exchange. That's about it. But look at that. 7.528 billion shares off exchange. Hmm. Hello. Yellow. The old glitches again. Uh, Mr. Justin John, shout out, sir. Good morning, y'all. Just tech to see my TD Ameritrade advisor client app is saying AMC regardless sh regarding short interest. Take a peek at this. Wait till the very end here. Eighteen hundred and eighty-three point three three percent of the float. I mean, come on, right? We touched on the glitches yesterday. And then over here, uh, when was this posted? About a month ago? Yeah, 27 days ago. Shout out to Dis, Dis Sex Licks. What I can't read that, friend. That's way too small for my bad eyes. Uh, posted 27 days ago on the old AMC subreddit over there. Main glitches, if you guys want to pause it, we don't need to go over every single one of them. But just look at this here. There's a good 11 of them on here with back you know showing the proof of but you know a glitch on the nyse website shows amc after hours trading at 95 dollars trading part of the price around nine dollars i remember that april 15th then it goes into may june july i'll pop a link in there if you guys want to read through this look at the old tweets or the reddit post about them but very interesting i mean 1883 percent over here eh, i don't know but again, with yesterday's shit show, all of these dates, you don't know what to believe anymore. You really, you, you don't. We just need to know the the proof that we know. The speculation stuff sure is fun and some of that stuff, the hopium and all that. But Jesus, Murphy, you know what? Good night. Speaking of, uh, the this was a, fi I tried to look on this. I think this was a comment. I don't know, but this has been, screenshots been floating around today, I noticed too. But the broker still, this is from Fintel. The broker still has record records the position as short. Even if the shares are not located, this means that on settlement day, the short position is counted just like every other short position. So naked shorts are, capital A-R-E, counted in the official exchange reported short interest. So basically, Fintel saying right there that there is naked shorts. We know, they know, your mom knows, everyone knows, right? We know this. Jesus. This is um, crazy here. I tweeted this damn thing out. I'm about halfway through it. But if you open up this PDF in the browser, we'll take you over here to 92 pages, a ton of pages. But what this is, read this here, ETF short interest and failures to deliver naked short selling and oper or operational shorting. This is done by the Darden Business School Working Papers number 269 blah, blah, blah. 92 pages posted on May of 2017 and revised um, after the shit show that was this year on in March of 2021 by these fine four folks here. But I'm going to read this entire thing because we're talking this ETF conversation has gone on for the last two, three weeks. Pretty heavy. It's got a lot to do. Uh, we touched on it last night with GameStop. They're short in the whole goddamn sector. 
um, the short interest in that and those ETFs and all that nonsense right there. So very, very good. I'm obviously going to pop this in for you fine folks. Uh, real quick on the way out the door. This was a super stock post from earlier today. Financial Finger 7, nine hours ago today on the old super stock. But in March 2005, this guy bought 100% of shares, 1.1 million shares in a traded stock to prove the corruption. The next two days, the same stock traded 50 million times, dropping the price 99% in two hours. Duh. Hello. This is a link to the video over here. He just clipped about a minute of it in here. But I, we shared this video, I did, um, six, seven months ago or whatever. You guys watch this if you haven't heard this whole story on it. It's just mind-blowing. It's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. And remember, when did this take place again? 2005. Remember, we're in 2022 here in about 28 hours from the time I'm recording this. Um, uh, hello? Hello? Yeah, we know. We know, folks. Okay, that's it. Let's see what tomorrow brings Friday. Uh, happy New Year's. Everyone stay safe out there. Don't do anything crazy. Don't do anything I would not do. We've got uh, 28 hours left in this year. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad it's over. This has been a long, long year, stressful year, holding this stock like most of us have, and I'm glad it to be over. Um, January, February are going to be some key months here. I just feel it. I feel the new year coming on. They don't want to take all this loss at the end of this year. Something's going to happen. They've driven these stocks down to the ground. The whole world is about to bust. All the economy, the ever, you know, we can talk about all of that nonsense for days and days and days. All that stuff's out there, right? So, hey, buckle up, boys and girls. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow.